Thank you, John, and uh, thank you everyone on the call for joining us today. I appreciate the time. I know everyone's extremely busy, so I'm really grateful to have you on this discussion and presentation with us today. All right. So like John mentioned, I think most of you are familiar um, with our project and portfolio management solution, but I did want to talk a little bit about, as a refresher, just kind of the main three themes that we align our solution to. And really, when you think about SPM, a lot of folks kind of go straight to, okay, how are we managing our work and how are we managing our projects? But kind of the key to what we're talking about today is really ensuring that you're managing that work and aligning that with the overall strategies of the organization. So within strategic portfolio management, we have a way to kind of encapsulate those goals and strategies, but also understanding that those can take on their own individual life cycle as things change. Um, one of the things we'll talk about is AI. Probably a year, two years ago, that really wasn't on a lot of our customers' radar screen. And now all of a sudden it's front and center, has a lot of touch points to the organization and introducing efficiencies. So being able to adapt those strategies and reprioritize those as the environment changes is important to our customers. Once those strategies are in place, um, we're always faced with that situation where we have a request for more work than we have resources, time, and money to deliver that work. So that's where alignment comes into play from a strategic planning perspective, focusing on the most appropriate and the best work to invest those resources, time, and money into. Um, understanding that you know the overall goal is that balanced portfolio, because while we would love to do kind of the high value projects, oftentimes we're also handcuffed a little bit by compliance and regulatory type of efforts and, and work streams that we need to focus on as well. So really taking a look at visibility into all that work and making and the request for work and aligning that with the overall strategies of the organization. So our strategic portfolio management solution really manages the overall end-to-end -end process associated with aligning with those strategies, selecting that work, delivering that work, and then measuring that value to the organization. From today's perspective, we're really going to focus on kind of the, the front half of this process to really um, center around overall portfolio prioritization and selection. So how do we enable strategic planning? How do we help our customers identify what that best portfolio looks like today? So a little bit out of scope will be kind of the delivery side and tie into other solutions, but really optimizing how we select the appropriate um, requests for work and turn those into projects that we're delivering to our customers. One of the things I did want to call out is, I mentioned it briefly, is you know how, how can SPM help our customers with visibility and planning around their overall AI strategies. What we're seeing from our, our customer base is, you know, there are a lot of initiatives underway to identify how, or how they're going to enable AI technologies, um, overall from a platform perspective, but also just kind of piecemeal solutions that might have more um, specific use cases to, to leverage AI capabilities to introduce those efficiencies to the organizations. There's a lot of planning around this today. So, you know, this is an example of a framework that kind of Gartner has supported. So how do you, you know, manage your portfolio? How do you put some structure and governance around evaluating these technologies so you don't spin up, you know, multiple science projects kicking the tires on these technologies? What we're seeing from our customers is strategic portfolio management is really well suited to manage those AI project portfolios. So while we talk about those strategies that we can represent within strategic portfolio management, this shows an example of an AI strategy, right? AI transformation, and we quickly get visibility into all the work, demand projects, agile work related with those and the dependencies associated with it. So when somebody asks that question, what are we doing around AI? What are we delivering? What are we evaluating? We can quickly leverage strategic portfolio management to help um, identify the work that's going on within the organization to support those initiatives. And it's not only just kind of planning perspective, but also actually doing the work around these evaluations as well. So being able to spin up um, something within what we call a new, new capability, relatively new capability around collaborative work management is kind of a, a way to manage what we call these science projects out there, something that's you know bigger than a request, but smaller than a project where we're evaluating that technology, maybe evaluating the vendor strategy. We can represent that 
within strategic portfolio management as well. And finally, um, one area that we're not talking about today, but application portfolio management also follows within this domain. Um, we're seeing this uh, a lot of interest and in, in work in this area going around supporting that data governance. So within these large language models, um, within sensitive data, our customers want to ensure that you know, that data is being contained or at least they have visibility into which systems are providing data to those large language models and which systems are consuming data or leveraging those models for features and capabilities. So application portfolio management allows us to manage those relationships as well. So we're going to hop into kind of overall broader brushstroke strategic planning, but um, a, a recent presentation wouldn't be complete without at least a comment around artificial intelligence. So did want to put that on your radar screen so you get an understanding of where how SPM could help within that domain as well. All right, so with that, John, I will turn it back over to you. So those of you that haven't uh, been introduced to Results Positive before, we're an organization that partners with uh, ServiceNow as our strategic partner, and we're helping organizations get the best benefits for the best results for their technology investments, whether that be process, or whether that be people or technology uh, solutions. And we've been uh, focusing here in the strategic portfolio management uh, space for uh, almost uh, 20 years and uh, over 350 different customers. And one thing that we do uh, religiously is focusing on analytics and reporting. We feel that that really drives adoption. That visibility then helps uh, make sure that, that strategy does become a reality, as well as that uh, enables better decision making. So what we'd like to jump in here first is really talking about strategic planning. And uh, I have a slightly different view, but uh, similar to Brad's uh, kind of introductory uh, slide there. So we're going to focus here about strategy uh, here with the ServiceNow's uh, solution. And we're starting off here with strategic plans. You can actually manage your, your OKRs strategies or goals, so however, whatever framework you want to use there, but really defining the strategy, uh, as Brad mentioned, the importance of aligning and execution. One thing I'm going to focus on today is around strategy execution, which is the combination of uh, each of these strategy alignment and execution, because that's really how we make our uh, strategic plan a reality, is combining the planning, making sure that that plan uh, is in alignment with all of our activities, as well as then we're executing on those items to drive the realization of those plans. So when you look at strategic planning, and we're not gonna go into the strategic planning process today where you might be assessing the marketplace and doing your SWOT analysis and coming up with your overall uh, strategic pillars and, and priorities there, as well as your goals, but we're just gonna provide a high level summary and then uh, highlight how ServiceNow can support that process. So we understand that uh, healthcare organizations are creating these strategic plans, and we're seeing that, uh, as we mentioned earlier, across the, the organization. We're also then seeing how that strategic plan is broken down into operational strategic plans or other strategic plans with each business unit or each department in the healthcare organization. And so by creating those plans, associating the specific goals, so we can actually track and determine, even though our plan is to increase access or increase uh, you know, patient uh, care, we might have specific goals for this year. We might have a different goals for next year to help us achieve those strategic uh, plans and strategies. So typically here, once we have that plan and we have our overall guiding uh, priorities and goals, then we can create our uh, different planning items. Uh, what's nice here in ServiceNow is we can look at our kind of proposed projects or demands. We can look at projects, we can look at epics, so we can kind of manage it from an agile perspective. Obviously, then you'd go through a prioritization ranking uh, process, and then from there you can establish your roadmap, and that roadmap would have all the big rocks then uh, that you can then use to help guide the organization uh, into execution so that you can then ensure uh, that strategy uh, is a reality for the organization. So if we were to look at kind of that process within ServiceNow uh, here at a high level, uh, you'd start off here by creating a strategic plan. And so that can be for the organization. 
uh, here. And then we can see here, then each BU could create a strategic plan. We'll highlight in the demo today how you might create a, an AI specific strategic plan. So as a part of that plan, right, you would establish your mission and vision. You would establish the values that you want everyone to follow. And then you'd really establish those priorities, those pillars that are really driving uh, the direction of your strategic plan. And then you'll set various goals and targets or OKRs uh, against those uh, priorities and pillars that will really then drive uh, the activity in the organization and helping you achieve uh, that uh, planned result. So the same type of process can be followed here uh, at, in, with the business unit strategic plan, or it could be a functional plan like we're alluding to here from an AI uh, perspective. Um, and so that's kind of looking things at the top down uh, perspective. Um, here, we're looking at things in terms of goals and goal progress. So that's really another key component here of uh, managing your strategic plan to actually make it a reality is breaking down those goals into targets. So you can think of that as your key results uh, if you're managing things from an OKR perspective. And just FYI, ServiceNow allows you to manage things from a goals framework perspective or OKR. There's a a simple configuration you would do, do there to um, flip that around so it's OKRs. So I'm gonna kind of use that interchangeably through the conversation. But the key thing here to focus on reality and how do we make our, our strategy a reality is monitor and tracking that goal progress. Um, and so that could be a manual process, uh, periodic review, that can be an automated process here in ServiceNow using your uh, benefit plans that would roll up into the overall uh, goals. And so you can then be able to track that. Uh, next here, we've got our strategic roadmap. So once we create our plans, then we do our uh, really brainstorming and we would create our backlog of potential initiatives. And then from there, we'll review those, prioritize them. Uh, once they're prioritized, then they will show up here on our roadmap. And then we can uh, manage that roadmap uh, as well as confirm that we have that resource capacity. So that's another key component here for uh, making your strategy a reality is making sure you have enough resources so you can execute. And it also then helps you make sure that your resources are focused on your strategic initiatives first versus those daily uh, ongoing operational activities or those non-strategic initiatives that will pop up uh, throughout the year. Now, what's really key to that is making sure that you have governance in place uh, also, it's uh, important that uh, the teams that have been assigned to work on those initiatives, that they can manage their projects, they can execute those projects to deliver those outcomes. And so that's typically done with the uh, bottom-up uh, planning activities and just really getting in and doing that project execution. As Brad mentioned, and uh, as we've seen, uh, it's really a balancing act. And so it's really important to have that visibility into your strategic plan and your goals and your outcomes uh, so that you can keep focus there and you can achieve those outcomes while still running the business. And so having that visibility is uh, vital as well as then having the supporting uh, governance structure in place. So here's an example of the governance structure that we uh, use with organizations as they are implementing their overall strategic portfolio management uh, processes. Uh, and this allows to continue to have that focus uh, continue to review and track progress uh, against your plan so that you can achieve those uh, desired outcomes. Now, one key thing here is you can have a strategy, uh, but then it's trying to determine what are the right initiatives to help us achieve those. And one input into that is around prioritization and scoring. And so recently, uh, ServiceNow uh, supports that ability to have some out-of-the-box scoring mechanisms. Uh, frameworks as well as allow you to create your own frameworks uh, for scoring. So the RICE uh, framework here uh, around uh, reach, impact, confidence, and effort gives you a great way to look at scoring. You can do the agile way with the weighted uh, shortest job first uh, framework, or you can do the standard kind of effort versus uh, value. So those are the three out of the box, but you can tailor and create your own uh, scoring framework It'll help with that prioritization, help you make those right decisions for the right initiatives to uh, achieve the uh, outcomes you're looking for uh, with your strategic plans. Uh, next, one thing that we've found 
uh, very vital is uh, having visibility. And that can ensure that you have alignment and commitment, ensure that the organization is focusing on the right initiatives uh, to drive those strategic outcomes. And so as a part of that, we've created the strategic plan portal. So it's executive uh, type portal that you can communicate with the organization. We see many organizations create a, ver a version of this as a standoff, a standalone PDF or PowerPoint. But here you can use all the data that you're using already for your strategic planning and then be able to share that online or via a PDF or PowerPoint using our strategic plan portal. So that's something we'll highlight here uh, in the, uh, the demonstration. So I'm uh, now here uh, logged into uh, ServiceNow and I'm here in the strategic planning workspace. And so I can come up here and I can look at our different initiatives. I can come over here and look at, say, our current uh, healthcare strategic plan. I'm gonna go back and show you how you can create that strategic plan and then how you can communicate that out uh, to the organization. Um, here, I'm looking at my particular strategic plan. I'm in the prioritization view here, which is really all of my backlog. But you can see here, I've got uh, all of my different uh, goals that are part of that strategic plan. And then I can see the different initiatives that are associated with uh, those particular goals. Here again, I could filter the information and display it differently, but it helps keep that focus on our overall goals here to drive uh, overall uh, excellence in healthcare. So that's uh, an e example here that I wanted to start off with. But if we come back over here into uh, the list view here in the strategic planning workspace, we can then see here that we have strategic plans. So you can come in here and you can create your own new strategic plan. What I'll do here is gonna highlight uh, how that works here in the system. So I can click into this strategic plan that I've created here for our demonstration today. And here within this strategic plan, uh, first of all, I name it, I'll, I'll put it in an overall sponsor. Could be the CEO from your strategic planning office, could be the CIO from uh, IT, it could be uh, CISO, it could be uh, with HR. Uh, so you can create different strategic plans for each uh, business unit. Then I put the duration of the strategic plan. Is it just gonna be a one year strategic plan? Uh, here in this case, I'm looking at uh, two years. And then we can kind of describe, provide a description, what's the vision of our strategic plan and our mission. Obviously you went through some workshops and collaboration across the organization or as part of your strategic planning team to really create uh, the vision and mission here for your strategic plan. And we've got some various settings here that help control the viewing of that strategic plan in our strategic planning uh, portal, which we'll highlight here shortly as well as then you can set the values that you wanna align the organization to uh, and key values that are gonna uh, help drive the execution of your strategic plan. And then here you get to define the uh, pillars or the strategic priorities that you wanna have the organization focus on here as part of uh, this overall strategic plan. And so we can see here common pillars that you might see in healthcare, patient satisfaction, we want to modernize our, our technologies, uh, quality of care, focus on uh, access uh, to service. So some of the key things that you would expect to see here from a healthcare perspective. And then we can obviously drill into those and look at each uh, a specific uh, strategic priority. Uh, and we can also look at that priority and give it an end date as well, because priorities can change uh, and they might uh, change over time, so uh, that might have a specific end date. We can see here that it's related to our overall healthcare uh, strategic plan. I can determine what I wanna share uh, in our reporting portal. And then here I can see the associated goals. So we have our strategic plan for digital care access, and then here we can set our various goals, and this will then be used for planning and developing of our initiatives uh, to help uh, achieve the outcomes desired with our strategic plan. And so then with the goals here, and like I said before, these can be labeled as your OKRs. Um, and so we can have uh, of our different uh, goals here, then we can actually identify our targets as well. So those are the actual metrics. Those are the uh, key results we're looking to accomplish here with our goals. So we can actually define uh, those targets uh, here. In this case, uh, add five uh, telemedicine uh, additional procedures 
that we can offer our our, uh, our patients. So uh, a great way to kind of track that. Like we said before, you can track that automated or you can track that uh, manually as well. So that's how you can kind of come in here and create your strategic plan, have it documented uh, here in the system, and you'll be able to then uh, manage and maintain this, uh, expire it over time, create a new uh, plan for a new time frame. So it gives you that ability to manage uh, your overall strategic plan. And then as we showed earlier, right, you can communicate uh, your strategic plan via your different portfolio plans here and highlighting your various uh, goals and how things are related to those goals. And so that's how we're looking at it here, looking at the different initiatives. I got projects, we have proposed projects here. Uh, we could also have our epics here, uh, looking at things from a, an overall agile perspective. We can also then look at our roadmap here. So these are all of the prioritized uh, you know, projects, uh, initiatives, uh, epics, or even strategic programs. And we can have our overall roadmap here, What's really nice is you can start uh, looking at dependencies. So you can uh, track dependencies here as well. So this is kind of the planning view, uh, but you could look at it here. And if you wanted to kind of look at from a, a status perspective, you can see the health of these major initiatives to help us uh, achieve our strategic goals. And we can see uh, say percent complete here as an example, you can actually uh, tailor uh, what uh, attributes you want to be displayed here. So you can easily uh, change different variables to display and track and monitor the status of your roadmap, as well as can you make uh, changes here to your actual uh, timeline here, right? So I can adjust uh, the timeline associated with items here. So uh, that can help or alleviate any dis uh, dependencies or constraints that you might have. Also, as you're doing your planning here, it's, it's vital, as we mentioned earlier, to make sure that we can uh, track and understand our resource availability. So in this case here, we can see that uh, we definitely have some, uh, some issues when it comes to resource availability. So that's gonna be probably the first thing that we're gonna attack here uh, as it uh, comes to helping to make our strategic plan a reality uh, and being able to execute uh, the associated uh, planning items. So it gives you all this information here to plan uh, and to establish that roadmap while at the same time uh, scoring your initiatives and being able to confirm that you have uh, sufficient capacity. So the next thing I, I wanted to highlight is another way on how you can communicate. So this strategic planning uh, workspace is great. You can share it with uh, other parts of the organization. Um, so they'd either need to have the uh, strategic planning, um, strategic portfolio management license, or they could have a business stakeholder license and you could uh, share uh, access here. So the strategic, excuse me, the business stakeholder license, you allow someone to have read-only access so they could see uh, the prioritization and backlog as it aligns to your goals. They can then see the, uh, the overall roadmap here. Uh, they could also then look at things from a, a capacity perspective. Also here, if we wanted to look at this here, we could look at different types of uh, groupings here. If we wanted to really keep everything aligned to uh, the goals that we talked about. We can see here within department, we can then see the individual goals here and how uh, we've got that alignment uh, here for our strategic plan, which is gonna give us more confidence that we'll be able to accomplish uh, our uh, strategic objectives. So that's one way of, of sharing it. Uh, another way here is uh, using the uh, strategic uh, portfolio uh, report here, the results positive, has uh, created here. And so this is an example of how you can share uh, that information. So online, you can share this to review uh, with your organization. Uh, you can also uh, export this into a PDF for PowerPoint. So basically that data that you're putting into ServiceNow can be represented here in a nice way to communicate uh, your strategic plan, uh, focusing here on strategic priorities here then uh, breaking those down into your OKRs and goals, as well as on your associated uh, targets, uh, the metrics you're trying to accomplish. Uh, and then here we can then look at the actual uh, initiatives here for that particular uh, pillar or strategic priority of modernizing our healthcare technologies. And we can see the status there 
we can see the timeline. Um, what's also nice here, we can look at and view, do we have strategic initiatives, programs, demands and projects, or epics? Um, so you have different types of planning items that can be displayed. Same thing here, we go to our next uh, pillar or strategic priority. We can then start to see our goals and our associated targets uh, associated with that. And then we can uh, come over here and view those initiatives, the timeline. In this case, we're seeing that we have a strategic initiative with a strategic program and associated uh, planning items. And we have another uh, strategic program uh, here and other initiatives. So you can give that visibility out to the organization. Uh, and so you can just continue that through your selected uh, strategic priorities and initiatives and be able to provide that type of visibility uh, and report out to the entire organization. So with this online version, uh, you can actually share this with the organization so they can come in and, and monitor how well the organization is doing at the highest level uh, here for the, across the organization. Or maybe they want to come in and look at the uh, AI strategic plan. So as Brad was mentioning, organizations are putting together uh, an overall strategy around AI frameworks, governance, risk management around AI. And so that's probably what your organization is doing or in process of doing. And so here, similar thing here, we would have our mission around AI, how we want to, to grow the business and increase efficiencies. And here, we've got our various vision and, and values associated with that. We've got our different strategic priorities. How do we use it to create an advantage? How do we use it to enhance and transform the workforce? How do we manage the AI risks? How do we build a, an AI foundation uh, for the long term? And so those are our pillars. Uh, then here we can look at creating a strategic advantage. How do we discover new AI use cases? How do we create an AI selection and governance frameworks? Uh, how do we discover use cases for efficiency gains? How do we establish our uh, AI usage guidelines and policies? This whole governance I see is really key uh, in healthcare. So protecting your IP, uh, protecting copyrights, as well as protecting uh, patient uh, information is critical. So it's really important to have some guidelines and policies uh, for the organization. And then from there, we can look at how are we doing around creating a strategic advantage for the organization and what are the initiatives and what's the current status on those initiatives. So great way to uh, be able to uh, communicate and share with the organization your strategic plan, progress uh, for your strategic plan uh, using ServiceNow and the results positives here, a strategic plan portal. So that's uh, one of the core things that we wanted to highlight here uh, in our uh, demonstration today. I've got a couple more things here. I want to talk a little bit about execution. Brad kind of mentioned it there that you've got strategy, alignment, and delivery. Um, so really to help your uh, strategy become a reality, you definitely have to focus on uh, execution. And so we're seeing most organizations in healthcare are, are hybrid. Uh, definitely some are trying to adopt more of the, uh, the safe, uh, complete agile framework, but definitely uh, hybrid. So as we've been mentioning here today, focusing on starting with strategic planning, uh, using that as a way to uh, track and manage and uh, really uh, approve funding for your various initiatives. And then based upon the execution method of the different groups, right? That can be delivered in an agile fashion, that can be delivered in a, a standard a project execution fashion. Um, here's an example of that hybrid execution. Uh, those projects still might require upfront waterfall type planning, then doing your agile uh, capabilities uh, execution as sprints uh, or iterations. And then a lot of your closing, launching, a go live activities more from a waterfall perspective. We've seen many organizations where uh, they're doing that hybrid, they're getting that approval, they're creating epics, they're managing those, they're creating a container uh, for the project because executives still want to report the legacy way. So you create a project here. And then from that project, you create epics and the agile teams go off and do their uh, agile development. Uh, and then uh, they're, they're able to continue to report up the old fashioned way from a status report perspective and the epics are then reported as milestones uh, on our traditional uh, project status report. That way executives are able to track and, and see the progress 
and the execution against the strategy via the stash reports while the teams are using their execution method of choice. Here again, organizations in, in healthcare, some are still just doing traditional waterfall. So we still see that. So that's still available uh, for your overall execution uh, approach. And then recently released in the uh, strategic planning workspace is the enterprise agile planning. And so what's really cool there, you can actually create your own uh, framework that you want to use. This is built upon and leveraging the SAFE framework, um, but you can kind of come in here and tailor that uh, for the way you would like to manage uh, things if you're really looking at enterprise agile. Uh, so uh, that's another execution method as you can use here using ServiceNow. Uh, next here, we just wanted to highlight a couple of uh, new components that'll help with your execution as it relates to the uh, project workspace. So some of you might not be aware of these. Some of these uh, uh, just came out uh, within the last month here. So now uh, with the uh, new uh, project workspace, they recently release, released the, uh, the analytics page. So similar to what you might've experienced in the past, if you've used ServiceNow in the past. So now it's more on the UI builder, uh, similar information here, but uh, now you've got it available in the new uh, project workspace. And the next here, I think is a very exciting, uh, customers are really excited about this, is now you can use, uh, they've introduced the, the docs uh, component here. So basically you can manage and collaborate on documents here. And also they have some out of the box uh, templates that you can use. So as a project charter, as an example, or project meetings, as an example, um, here again, you can create your own uh, templates as well. So it's a great way to collaborate you can share information with uh, with team members here, um, and you can use this to you know track and, and document uh, results of your project meetings. Here again, keeping that focus on the strategic goals you're trying to accomplish for the organization. Uh, then next here, Brad mentioned a little bit on the collaborative work management. Uh, so this is another uh, great solution here that you can use, and it really helps with that execution set of activities. And so. The important thing here is just to kind of let the organization know how to best use this. As Brad kind of mentioned it, it's an opportunity to bring all of your information, all of your work items, say outside of projects together. It also can help you if you have a work group that's actually working on creating your actual strategic plan, but right? you can use it there to uh, manage uh, that collaborative process. Uh, you can use it to uh, really create uh, different uh, spaces and boards for teams. So think of it here that uh, the strategic planning group in, in your healthcare organization, they could use this as they're creating their strategic plan. Uh, they could also use this and invite other parts of the organization around the risk team or uh, HR or even uh, claims or membership and create a cross-functional team here to assist with that uh, planning activities. Theirs are trying to put together that strategic plan. Um, so just as an example there. Uh, and then also here, you've got the ability to collaborate with documents. So uh, a great capability here. One thing that's nice, both in the project documents as well as the collaborative workspace is you can actually uh, create a quick reference and link to any work items, right? So if uh, this happens to be related to a project you're working on, you can associate it uh, to the project uh, here. You can actually tag team members uh, if you're having them focus on uh, a component of the, your a work management activity. So great tools here to help you with the execution. Strategic planning is vitally important, but you combine that with uh, execution uh, capabilities all on the same platform, then you're going to be able to make that reality uh, e even, even uh, better. So I'm just looking at time here. I know some of you might want to see some of those solutions. I'll see if I have a couple of those here. So as we as was showed here earlier, uh, you can uh, now use project docs as an example. I know I can use a template here. So say if I wanted to do a meeting uh, minutes here, I can create a new doc here. I've got my template and I can start uh, adding information here. I can also come in here and if I want to identify who attended, I can quickly identify those individuals and they'll be tagged here for this particular meeting uh, as an example. And so if we're looking at this agenda uh, here, we can uh, come in here and add in, you know, maybe we want to relate this to a particular project task 
that we're working on here. So this is a uh, focusing here with our project sponsor as an example. So that way you've got quick links here uh, and take someone directly to that task. But a great way to manage things here from an overall uh, project collaboration perspective. Then here we've got the analytics page that I was showing earlier to help give you more visibility into the progress of the project, helping protect those investments that uh, have been approved uh, to help drive the strategic goals of the organization. So that's looking at things there from that uh, project workspace perspective. On the collaboration work management, we're actually doing a full uh, webinar next month, so definitely uh, recommend attending there. But basically, with your different groups, uh, I create my individual spaces or a team space. And so it's kind of a, a three-tiered space. I've got a, a space I can create multiple folders. And then within those folders, then I can create uh, various boards as well as uh, documents. So uh, you can uh, use it to kind of manage uh, things in that, in that fashion. So more to come on that uh, in our webinar uh, next month. So uh, just wanted to provide a brief overview there of those capabilities. And next here, some of you might have uh, known about some of our capabilities here. So in addition to the strategic uh, report portal we highlighted here today, uh, visibility is key. So if you're looking for ways to share all of that strategic planning work with the, with the entire organization without any constraints, then you can uh, use our executive uh, portals uh, to be able to provide that visibility. That way they can uh, quickly uh, view uh, your, your roadmap. Then from there, they can quickly get access to, say, a business case, uh, a status report, uh, a project charter uh, here. So uh, what we found is uh, executives, uh, a lot of the, uh, I would say, uh, CIOs or COOs are, are using it on a daily basis prior to getting together with meetings uh, with the different business units so that they're prepped uh, to discuss what new initiatives might have been uh, recommended from those different groups, as well as what's the progress and status uh, of your initiatives um, before meeting with those executives. So wanted to kind of provide you a brief overview of that, but definitely something you can tap into. Uh, almost all of our healthcare uh, customers are using uh, reporting solutions. So lastly, just wanted to highlight, how do you make all this happen? How do you uh, utilize uh, ServiceNow strategic uh, portfolio management? So we have our implementation best practices, definitely recommend to do it in a phased approach. We wanna focus all about adoption and your overall outcomes and results. So definitely do it in a phased approach. Uh, we do have some critical success factors uh, that are key. One's around starting with your key performance metrics, reports, providing that visibility up front. Don't over automate, uh, keep it simple, focus on the foundational out of the box uh, capabilities of the solution. Uh, use the reporting capabilities that we've just talked about here. Uh, that's a key component of your overall organizational change, but also making sure that you have an organizational change program uh, to get the organization uh, up to speed and start adopting. But we found if the one thing that you can do is provide them with uh, visibility and executives are uh, using that visibility to make decisions, that's going to drive the adoption you're looking for. That's going to help your data be accurate and up to date. Uh, so uh, a key component there of your organizational change journey. So what we wanted to do now is uh, open it up for questions and answers. So we've got uh, Brad here available to answer any of your questions as well as myself. Hey, Brad, just to put you on the spot here. Uh, any common questions you're getting from receiving from customers as it comes to strategic planning and strategic planning workspace? Um, I would say a lot, a lot of what we're getting <clears throat> is still boiling down to kind of demand, like how to optimize the intake request, what fields are, you know, kind of aligned with best practices. And I think, you know, what we've seen from a lot of customers is, you know, they typically have an existing demand management process for that intake. And, you know, when they try to kind of replicate what they already have, they've found that that's a little bit onerous for people to fill out. So, um, you know, one customer, for example, they had like 70 additional fields that they added on their demand request. They went back to out of the box because there were just too many questions around, you know, how are we using this information? What's needed? Um, they went back to out of the box, ran that for a couple of quarters and then added some, 
you know, additional fields when, when it was needed. So a lot around just kind of using that out of the box content for demand um, that we're seeing customers to find that balance of, you know, what's needed to prioritize versus what's unique to their organization. That's a big area. And then um, just with the new resource management capabilities, a lot of folks kind of planning, planning for that to ensure that their resource assignments are kind of updated to, to the new model as that comes up. Yeah, that, that's a really good point there. So a couple of uh, questions that we're getting from customers as they are looking at adopting agile and, and hybrid is how do they best manage that uh, intake process when they're also trying to do strategic planning? Uh, and, and this is an example uh, within healthcare. And so what we've found, seen those organizations doing is actually uh, kind of shifting some of that de demand intake where they want to focus on 80% of their demand intake would come from strategic plans for all their new initiatives. And then 20% would come through the, the standard intake process, uh, more from a bottom up organization wide perspective. And so that way they have more control over the, uh, you know, quote unquote, the big rocks because they're getting those uh, strategic uh, roadmaps developed top down. And they're doing that both from a product perspective so they're looking at their different value streams and their different uh, product areas. And so they're within that, they're, they're working uh, jointly across uh, each department on the business side, as well as the IT side. They're, they're creating a joint roadmap. It's giving them the big rock. So that's 80% of their demand intake. And then that way they can use a prioritization and scoring uh, methods to do that. And then they're coupling that with the standard, uh, just uh, ad hoc uh, items coming in from a demand intake process. So. We're seeing that, and, and that's also then driving uh, some of the adoption of the uh, enterprise agile planning. So I don't know if you've seen anything in that space, Brad, but uh, we're starting to see that as well. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you there, John. All right, everybody. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, John, did you have any concluding comments or anything from Brad? Yeah, I just wanted to mention uh, here. So if you're looking at strategic planning, the adoption of the strategic planning workspace, uh, and the associated components with resource capacity, resource management, or you're looking at hybrid uh, project portfolio management as well as hybrid planning. Uh, those are where we're seeing customers uh, tapping into uh, our expertise to assist them in those uh, implementations so they can get value out of uh, their investments around strategic portfolio management. Um, and that also then includes opportunities around uh, our reporting solutions, uh, implementation services, ongoing advisory and configuration support. Uh, so depending on what's your biggest need, uh, we do have common uh, next steps. Schedule a health check uh, with us, value discovery workshop. Uh, we can do that uh, jointly with Brad and team. Um, or if you wanted to kind of schedule a demo, more deep dive into our uh, reporting solutions, we can do that. Or you could schedule an implementation. Might be you want to migrate to the new resource manager and you want to implement strategic uh, uh, planning workspace, we can assist you there, or you can attend some of our uh, upcoming uh, training sessions. So a lot of good opportunities, as well as uh, some of our upcoming uh, webinars for some more information. Brad, anything you'd like to highlight in terms of next steps for uh, the attendees today? No, I would just echo kind of what you had said, John, right? Like the, there are different questions you may have out there around how how to do things differently or how to best do things. And I, I would say, you know, John's a fantastic partner to kind of help you with that. Um, and we can collaborate, you know, with our demo resources to kind of show you new capabilities as well. So please don't hesitate to reach out if there's anything we can help you with. Thanks, Brad.